Hey there, and thanks so much for joining me for another video. My name is Erin Eno, and today I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to paint this cute little fox pup in the snow. So grab your paints and let's get started. Before we jump in, I'll just run through my materials for you. Today I'm using my Bao Hong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I'm using my Van Gogh paints. I've got a jar of water. Now I have a jar of water. Paper towel handy. And I've got three brushes. I've got two Princeton Snap rounds, one in a size 12, one in a size two. And I have a Curry's uh, store brand brush in a size 10 round and I also have a beat up old craft brush which is very beat up and bristly so you just need a brush that's kind of got good stiff short bristles on it and they're, they're kind of like all frayed out like that okay and you will also need a pencil and an eraser and I have a couple here I needed one and just a standard old eraser oh and a reference photo my friend had emailed this to me I don't know where it came from or who to credit for it um, but we're just using it for personal use so that's okay we're not making cards and selling this so all is good there so I have not painted an animal in quite a long time and I've never painted a water or never painted a watercolor animal other than the back of a polar bear that was kind of like an illustration so I'm not counting that so this is going to be my first watercolor animal so fingers crossed and I hope it goes well so we'll start off and just draw this little guy out I'm going to move my brushes I'm going to use a harder pencil for this so I'm just going to indicate where he's going to start at the bottom of my sheet right about there I think and then where he's going to end at the top and I think right about here I think that's pretty good so I'm going to start by just drawing him in shapes first so I'm going to do a little kind of not little I'm just gonna do an oval for his head like this because he's a puppy his head's kind of big compared to his body so hopefully that's not too big and then I'll do another oval like this for his body I may have done his head a little large I'm gonna bring this up a bit just like that I'm gonna have a lot of extra lines but that's okay I'm just gonna erase the ones we don't need I just don't want to make it too messy that we can't really see what's going on here so actually you know what I think I'm gonna make this more of a circle sorry my table's gonna wobble while I erase so I'm gonna make this more of a circle like that and then his snout will make us just like a cylinder And then his ears I don't know what kind of shape you would call those but they're but they're pretty big just gonna curve them up a bit it's kind of like a rounded triangle I guess I'm gonna come down here and he also has an ear in the back that you can see so I'll just put that in there as well kind of disappears eventually make this one a little point here okay and then his hind legs you don't really see they're kind of buried in the snow but I'll just put a little indication line for them there and then his front leg you can see but his paw is buried in the snow that's probably a good thing because then we don't have to draw his paw now he looks like uh, a pig and let's hope he doesn't end up looking like a pig so now we're going to join these elements together so his snout I'm just going to do a curved line there okay and then a curved line kind of here 
and draw his snout up and his nose is a little pointy and then it comes down his mouth is there and it his mouth kind of curves down now this is just a reference photo we don't have to break our backs trying to match it exactly so his lower jaw will come down and then kind of curve into his chest like that okay and his jaw sorry and his chest curves under his front arm arm leg like that that's not too bad and then his head actually it comes from his ears And then his head will join his body right about there and come down and go where his little bum is in the snow. Okay, so that's his basic shape and we're just gonna go in and erase the extra lines and the lines that were here from the circle, like that one. And I'm just gonna refine his shape a little bit. And I think that should do it. So all those extra lines are gone and I'm going to lighten the lines that are left behind. I don't want them showing through the light parts of this fur. I forgot to mention we will be using, um, I'll be using my Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. If you don't have this you can use white gouache or even white acrylic paint. To start, I'm going to do the background first and I'm going to mix some indigo with a bit of Payne's Gray and a bit of Viridian because I want kind of a greeny, bluey gray. I'm gonna make extra. There we go. Get some more of the Payne's Gray. And that ought to do it. But I just want a light wash to start. And so I'm going to get most of the pigment off my brush. And I'm going to start at the top. That's a little too much pigment off my brush. There we go. And I just want it to get lighter as we get down towards the bottom. So I'm just going to bring this down just like that where we get to the fox I'm just going to turn my board you don't have to tape your uh, paper down to this it gets a little wet it might get a little wavy um, so I prefer to tape it down but I also like to tape it down because it's just easier to move it around that way to turn it and pick it up I just find if it's paper it's a little harder to do that it's just a matter of preference Go close to his nose there. And I just want to make sure that this all stays wet. And I'm going to come down to about his middle of his chest there. Okay, just like that. Get a little more pigment going. Bring it all down. And you can turn your board upside down, whatever's easiest to get the shape that you need. You can turn your board any way you want. And this is kind of our horizon line. It's a, whoops, didn't mean to do that. The background's blurry, but you can see kind of a horizon line there. So the bottom I want very light so we don't need much on our brush at all I'm 
Okay, so while this is still wet, I want to go in with more pigment because the background has almost like a bokeh effect. I don't want to screw up the shape of this muzzle there. So I'm going to go in, get some of that pigment on my brush and start tapping it in. And um, there's a lot of this pigment towards the horizon line as well. So I want to make sure we get that and around his ear. I want to stop that bleed, so I'm going to clean off my brush. I also dripped into his ear there. That's okay. I'm going to clean off my brush, take the excess water off, and just drag it across here. Pick up that pigment so there's more definition there. Same here. It does have a soft edge, I just don't want it to bleed down that much. So that's the background in place, and we can start the little fox. And I'm just going to do it in stages and layers, so it's not so overwhelming. We're not going for, you know, super realistic fox here. I'm going to, although I want the background to continue to bleed, I want to get going on painting the fox. So I'm just going to dry, take my hot air tool and just dry around the area where the fox is. Okay, that should be dry enough. It's not gonna give us some funky bleeds. So to do the fox, I'm gonna do the first layer, the light kind of sandy color that he has, and I'm going to use um, yellow ochre and a bit of this burnt sienna. The burnt sienna alone is a good color for his uh, darker fur so that's why I want to include it in the light area so I'm just going to use that but I'm going to take most of it off my brush because we just want a light wash over his entire body ears and everything Okay, so that's his base color. So now we can go in with the Burnt Sienna. I'm just gonna mix that here. So this is gonna be our second layer. And I'm just gonna do his whole body. And it should only go where it's wet, so it should only go where we've put the other paint. I actually can go beyond this to fix the shape of his body a little bit, like that. And that's gonna get covered with snow. So again, it's not a big deal. Okay, and I'm just gonna go up to his ears. We'll deal with his ears later. I'm gonna do his head. Okay, and just the top of his snout and just below his eyes here, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna bring it down to his leg. and his whole body there. Okay, so this is blending into that, which is perfect. And I'm gonna take the, my bristly brush. I'm gonna wet it. I just wanna make sure it's clean. Then I'm gonna tap off all the water. So and you, what I wanna do is take the paint that's bleeding into his chest and kind of sweep it out so it just has this kind of rough, furry kind of edge to it. So I'm doing that and then I'm tapping it off of my paper towel. So I'm just flicking. It comes down off his face a little bit, down this way. So I'm gonna flick that down and then flick this up so it goes into his fur there, okay? We don't have to draw every little wisp of fur. I don't wanna get into it too much like that, but it just gives it a softer edge. I can even, if I've taken too much off, you can just draw, draw, just paint in 
a line there and just bring it out like that where it just looks kind of wispy and furry. So before I go into this, the next layer, I want to dry this. So it's not totally dry, but it's dry enough. And we're gonna go in and take that sepia again and just do another layer over his behind, up his back, just like we did before. and up his head like that and this time I'm not going to come down too far so I'm just going to put in a few kind of brush strokes down here Okay, so we're just going to come a little shy of where we did the last time. Okay. Now he's got snow on his head up here, so we don't have to be too detailed up there. And I'm going to take this brush again. Actually, you can even take your small brush and do the same thing. Just whisk these out. You can even go in with the small brush and just do very fine strokes. up to his face here, just like that. I'm almost losing his front leg there. That's okay. Put a little bit more on his face. I know he looks weird now, but it'll all fall into place. You'll see. I don't know if I'm trying to convince you or myself. And I'm going to do these ones going down a bit. And I think we can go in and do his ears now. So his ears are fairly dark at the top, and they also have snow on them too. So if it gets a little screwed up, it's okay. Just like that. The ear behind is actually darker. I'm actually going to go in and get some Payne's Gray and get a dark, but I'm going to move this silly brush. So I'm just going to do the back ear because this back ear is what kind of gives the ear in front its shape. Okay, that might be a little much. I'll just tap a bit of it up. There we go. Okay, so that's that ear. And this ear is quite dark on the top. But then, like I say, it does get snow on it as well. Okay, and I'm just going to do little wispy brush strokes to make it look a little furry. And it just goes into his head a little bit like that. So I'm just softening up the edge a bit, just with the tip of my brush. And then the inside of his ear is also dark. So go get the Payne's Gray again. And some Burnt Sienna. And I'm going to do the inside of his ear. that. Then I'm going to clean and dry off my brush. 
and just do a few little wisps to make it look like it's just going into the little fur parts of his ear. Okay, so that's our other layer. And I think while we're into this dark Payne's gray and sepia, I'm going to get his mouth in place. So I can still see the pencil line. It just comes up and curves up and goes out to the end. And then his nose, we'll put that in place as well. That's going to have snow on it at the end as well. And then we can indicate his eye. Actually, you know what? I think I should dry this first. But we can go in and do the dark on his snout. He's got almost black in here. So I'm just going to tap little dots, like his whisker dots, like that. And then I'm going to just do flick up just to get some wispy lines going up. And then it just kind of fades off like that. And I'll go in and get some of the burnt sienna and just blend it out with the Payne's Gray there. Okay, so I'm going to clean off my brush, tap it on my paper towel, and just soften this up. That's all he needs. He's also going to have snow on his snout too. so. Okay, and I'm going to, oh, that should be dry enough to do his eye. I'm going to go in with just Payne's Gray this time. And I may, at the end, have to go in and just use black. But we can at least indicate where it is. And it's just like a curved line because he's got his eyes closed. He's looking. Well, he's not looking. He's just got his eyes closed and his face up to the snow. And then... He's got a little, whoop. Actually, I will go in and darken a little bit of this. The paint's gray, all, it goes on and it looks black, and then it dries to a fainter gray. So I'm just gonna heavy that up a bit, which is why we're gonna go in and do his eye probably in black, so. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my number 10 again and I'm going to get some of that burnt sienna and this time I'm going to add just a little bit of sepia just to make it a little bit darker okay just like that that's plenty and I'm going to do his bum here in the snow and then indicate where his arm comes down here because it is a little darker there and his front leg so his front leg blends in with the burnt sienna up there so I'm going to just fill this all in I could actually add some Payne's gray too it's actually black, I'll darken it up later. So I'm just gonna do this. Then I'm going to get that beat up craft brush again, okay? And we're going, actually I'll blend this out first, sorry. Let me get this blended. Then we'll go to the beat up craft brush, make sure it's fairly dry, and I'm just gonna flick lightly and keep tapping it on my paper towel and just fade that up into the rest of his coloring. Just gonna do some light furry brush strokes here going up into his face.
like that. And then he's got darker sections up here too. So it's dark around his eyes. So I'm just going to go right over his head. And I'll blend this out. So just keep layering and blending until you get the look you're after a bit. And just soften the, the edges as you go through. It's bleeding out a little bit, so I'm just going to take my bristly brush and just flick that up. I think he can afford to have a little more color on his chest or closer to his chest at least. So just bring it in like that. Bring this down to his arm. I think they're arms. They're arms on dogs and stuff, right? Okay, so I don't want that to dry too much, but I'm going to go in with this brush again and see how it's just dragging out some of that paint. Just gives it a soft blend. And you can just tap this all around him just to soften things up a bit. Brush it this way and even out into his chest. And I'm going to go into the darker sepia. So I'm just kind of playing around until I get it the way I want. Get a little bit of the Payne's Gray in there. And I'm just going to put a little more of the, oops, that's maybe too dark. A little more of the burnt sienna. Well, and just it's pretty concentrated at this point, but I'm just trying to get as fine a line as I can just to brush this through like that. And I will get the stiff brush again and just soften that all up just like that. I want it just still a little darker around where his neck would be creased. And more furry wisps here. I'm just going to put a light wash on his ear here, just so it's not so stark a transition. And I think I may have come in a little close to his face here with the darker color, so I'm just going to wet that just with a teensy bit of water. And I'm going to go in, I'm just trying to reactivate it to see if I can lift some of it up. I think I'll be able to with my bristle brush and just kind of scrub that away. I'm just going to go over his back again. Just a little more depth because I want a lot of a lot of shadow in where the snow's covering him. Now I want to put some shadow in where he is, where he's sitting in the snow. So I'm going to use that same blue that we used for the background. Just very diluted now. Okay, so I'm going to take most of the pigment off my brush and do a little shadow where his bum is kind of pushed the snow down. 
there's too much water on my brush there okay and a little bit here between his arm and his hind leg and then again here and maybe one here and I'm going to go in and I'm going to blend out those shapes so I'm just going to clean off my brush dry it off my paper towel and blend this out just soften the edges a bit Okay, and I can go in with a little bit more of that pigment and just do the very inside of it. Just to give it a little bit more depth. There we go. Before we do the snow, I want to just make his back look a little furry. So I'm just going to just take my brush, my number two, and just come out and do a little bit of line a little bit do a few lines just kind of drag them out kind of free wispy things i gotta come up with a word other than wispy but what else applies really and i do have some um bleed proof white in this mixing well here that has a little bit of blue in it so it's not a solid white and i'll just use that with my number two brush Actually, no, sorry, I lied. I'm going to stipple some snow on first so it just looks a little more organic. So I'm just tapping it in there and I'm just going to stipple some snow on. Now be careful when you do this. You can't do this by his head because, well, unless you have a very small brush. This brush is too big to go by his head. I can go on top a little bit, but not a whole lot I don't want to get carried away and I certainly can't do his ears with this because it's too big so that'll leave us a soft edge and I'll go and put more on with my other brush now that is going to be my size two and I'll do the big snow mound on his nose. And I'm going to go to the black, like I said, and just make his eye more prominent, like that. Okay, I think that's good. And now we can take the tape off and see what we have. forgot something really big here. I totally forgot to splatter the snow on. I took the tape off, shut my camera off, and then I splattered the snow and forgot to turn the camera back on. So here is the final picture of our little fox in the snow. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. And if you do give this a go and you're on Instagram, please be sure to share. That's it for today, guys. Take care and I'll see you next time.